Hey everyone, it's Sophie from Belgian Jungle and today we are going to be repotting some plants, potting up some plants, doing some houseplanty hospital stuff. If you don't already know, houseplant hospital is the series where I rescue problem plants and troubleshoot what's wrong with them and then treat them on camera so that you don't have to make the same mistakes that I do and if you accidentally do I can give you some idea of how to sort it out hopefully but first and foremost before we get to the plants that are looking a little bit ick we're going to repot my favorite plant this is beautiful philodendron campylinet and we're doing this because it has roots at the bottom, it desperately needs repotting and we've got a beautiful new leaf on the way and as you can see one of the lower leaves is yellowing and this is just kind of like how philodendron grow like as they get new leaves the older ones will unalive but this can happen to more than a couple of leaves if you leave something uh, to get really root bound when it needs repotting and as you can see we've got roots coming out the bottom there so we are going to do here i have stolen a pot from one of these struggle plants downstairs which we'll be getting to later uh, but i'm going to wash that out so that we can use it for this one this plant was actually the first plant that i ever put on a moss palm so it was a bit of a not the best job at putting a plant on a moss palm. i had to use this stake to keep it in and the big mistake that i made with this plant was not putting the pot on its side which was a tip that alina told me which i can't believe that i was so silly that i tried to do it all right but this time we can correct this let's be gently get it out of here and this is in the soiled ginger monster and philodendron mix Wow. Oh gosh, I didn't realize I'm like basically decapitating an anthurium. Those are some really nice roots. I think we've done really well here for not having a uh, root rot. There was a tiny bit on the side, Ooh, <laughs> but I just removed them. Where I messed up last time when I was trying to put this in the pot upright, all of the substrate fell out of the bottom of the pole, so I'm going to push some back in and hopefully make it the correct shape this time. And this is going just about as well as it did the first time. Maybe because I'm using my non-dominant hand right now. There, that's so much better. And now the substrate is in the bottom bit because if the moss was in the bottom bit, that could become quite water clogged. All right, I need to go rinse out the pot I'm about to use. All right, this is probably going to be a questionable decision, but it's the decision I'm going with because I can't seem to find a way to hold on to this plant. And this is the thing. Oh! If you guys haven't already heard me drone on about this soil, I absolutely adore it. It is such a good mix of chunky stuff. It's still got a bit of a wiggle onto it, whereas my umbricola, you can literally pick that up by the pole. Another reason I was really keen to repot this is because if you leave it too long to repot aeroids, your leaves can be a bit small. And I can see that compared to the size of the one I had last time, like this leaf, even though it will size up a bit more, is quite thin as it's emerged from the caterpillar. So I was keen to uh, get it on here and make sure the next leaf is a nice, big, lovely one, especially now I've got it growing up a pole. Oh, these leaves though. Oh, magic. And it's passing the wiggle test now. 
lovely. I'm gonna get this one watered and sprayed. This pole down, this is what happens when the pole gets left a little bit too long. This pole is a bit hydrophobic. I had a lot of stuff going on this week, so we're gonna fix it. Oh my God, I did not realize how badly I have messed up my nails. <laughs> they were not dry yet. This is just uh, water that I still put it through my filter. So when it's become completely dried out like this, uh, it's better to make it fully, fully saturated if you can. So just spraying the front until the front looks damp isn't going to work. That's only going to work as like a maintenance amount. So what I need to do is spray the front, fully saturate through the middle and take advantage of the fact that I'm now going to water this plant because I can water through the pole as well. And then it'll be much simpler to keep moist for the rest of the week. I love this watering can, but the one thing I think about it is why did they make this hole so small? Because it's so hard to aim into the hole and not spill it. I've gone for four drops of baby fire, which is quite a high dose because this is only half full at the moment. And this cup has a tiny slit in it, so it gradually drips into the moss. If you've been with me for a very long time, you may actually recognize this room though. It was not painted at the time. We're in my living room. This one is a special one and it is an anthurium. I don't have an ID. Actually, it was from my Auntie Joy's house. She unfortunately passed away earlier this year and my nan wanted to save this plant and she was a bit upset because she was struggling with it. So. What I want to do is sort this plant out today and then I'd like me to keep some of it and my nan to keep some of it uh, would be ideal. Straight away I'm thinking when I look in there, uh, incorrect substrate and uh, an overcrowding problem. So separating these should actually be quite good for it. But it has got new growth on the way, look there's a new little leaf there. And when it blooms eventually, that's when I'll be able to ID it. But I just really like the idea of her living on in this plant um, and I hope that when I meet my time that someone saves my plants. And in here they're both in soil plugs as well so this is a really obvious divide. There we go and then let's try and remove the soil plug. Oh, went in my mouth. <laughs> Yeah, you can see this has been severely underwatered. Uh, a lot of roots just coming off. In fact, yeah, this was a whole separate plant and that one's clearly uh, gone too far and dried out. And then this is a leaf that had to be removed by my nan. Let's take that petiole off. I have to say I was expecting more roots than this. I think I need to go get a smaller pot. Okay, so that's what we've got left. Definitely putting this in moss. I'll have to rehab the root system and then pop them it up in soil so that my nan uh, can do it because I know she's not going to be able to keep on top of rerooting it in the sphagnum. There's another one there that did not make it. On anthurium you want the roots to be like white and thick and have some turga still. Uh, you don't want them to be brown and dried out. Right, I had to take a little disability break. We're back now. It's got significantly darker though, the sun's moved around the back, so I'm glad I've got my light. This is so weird. This is like um, an offshoot that grew into a plant, but it's not really got many roots of its own, but we'll separate it. It's actually got quite a few growth points on the stem, which is cool. And then I'm gonna remove some of these sus leaves because they do have a yellow halo. Okay, so we're left with this one, this, and this. There is a fly in here that is really annoying me. <laughs> I 
those two are settled in there to carry on rooting and then this one that is the most rooted and has two new leaves on the way i think this is the one i'll give to my nan because it looks the nicest and i will just go grab a little bit more moss Sphagnum moss is just fantastic for rehabbing plants that have had root problems and helping to encourage the growth of new healthy roots, which is what I'm really hoping happens here and that these anthurium can root really, really well and strongly for me. So they'll just be rooting like that and I need to keep the sphagnum moss uh, not sopping or moist, uh, damp, but like just moist. Then we have two of Harriet's plants that live on the living room windowsill. This is a pile of palms, or Camadora is it elegans? And this is her Maranta Lucanera Fascinator. Now, this one has been struggling a bit. It's got a bit sunburn on this leaf, firstly, um, but I haven't repotted it for a year out of this rubbish mix. So let's see what's going on with the roots. Yeah, it's quite root bound. Oh, this is interesting. I've never seen, never seen a Maranta do this before. It's similar to when an alocasia puts up a stolen. Yeah, there was actually a little bit of root rot on here as well from those roots sitting at the bottom of the pot. What? This is so cool. I have never seen this on a Maranta, probably because it's always been uh, really juvenile clippings that I've seen. It seems to have produced uh water storage kind of a like a karma water storage backup vessel for itself that is so very cool and i'm putting this in the mix that i put my calathias in usually my other maranta at the moment i've been semi-hydro but this has quite a, a larger root system and it's already used to soil and i don't have uh, very much luck in plants that have shown sign of root rot trying to switch them into semi-hydro all right i'm going to <laughs> We'll leave the pile of palm there a second. I'm going to use uh, this the pot for the Maranta. If your plant has got root rot that's a lot more advanced, where it's not just on like the very ends of the roots, then there are other treatments you can do. Um, but when it's just a little bit like that, it's basically normal. Uh, like it's not an uncommon thing. Let's take a look at this pile of palm, which I'm surprised considering how long I've been meaning to repot it, that it's actually all right. right I can see some roots where I'm like, ooh, lovely white. And I can see some that have Looking a bit suspicious. For some of the extreme circumstances we've seen on House Plant Hospital before, like this is not an extreme thing. It was more of a case of that one really needs repotting and having the roots looking at. But also when you buy these from plant shops, um, they're often just loads of different little bulbs and clippings like all planted together like this and it actually can cause issues with overcrowding in the roots so what you want to do to avoid that is to break them up to put further apart from each other in the pot so that each root system has room to grow Oh, there's a new leaf on the way there. I love how they come up like that and then they gradually expand and then face down. We're going for a biggie. Oh, I really get annoyed at stupid nurseries for putting all these tiny little things in one pot and calling it one plant.
That's definitely actually an improvement on the overcrowding before, because the, especially the roots are all moss spread out them. Oh, quite, gotten quite large, isn't that right? I have this Calinco Tomentosa, and actually, oh, what would be so perfect would be if this could fit in this pot, because that's not gonna matter for that point in the oh. There we go, amazing, found the solution. I thought this ages ago from Tom Garden Center and I've kept letting it dry out too much by accident. And as a result, it has lost a lot of lower leaves. And I mean, some of you might be looking at that and thinking, that's cool, I rate that, but I just don't rate it having all those bare stems from this side. And I've had some relationship problems with this plant before as well, because uh, I believe you were in my plants I regret buying videos, so she's already salty with me. So I think that I should just prop it, get rid of these. Okay, this is fun to do though. And get rid of these stems. Righty ho then. And this, that's just a bit long. I doubt that that is going to happen. So snip, snipperoo. When I, oh, I've broke the stem. With succulents. And cacti, I prefer to prop them just by sticking them in the mix. So we're going to use the houseplant mix because like when you do a seed starting mix and you want something that's a bit more like dense and water retaining than what the actual mature plant likes, uh, I'm using this and then when it has roots it will be changed into cactus and succulent mix. How much better will it be and cute when it's not got all the bare stems? I'm not doing well with this. I'm really tired and I've just lost all, like, tactility with my hands. There we go, mate. Whoa, hey, hey. Then, these clivias were from Harriet's mum's grandma's plant. And then she gave us these ages ago before I was into plants. And it just literally sat there, like, got watered, like, a couple times a year. And then I got into plants and I was like, let's save this plant. And I looked at the roots and they were so dehydrated and messed up. Uh, so I repotted them. And then I think later on I repotted into a better mix again. I still often do forget to wat water this and it's got some papery roots. I did remove some earlier, but I needed the pot that it was in really badly, which I feel bad because that's really the only reason I got around to doing this. Like an orchid, this one goes like papery when the roots are kind of rotted from dehydration, like dry rot. Just too gone is that. Too dried out. Milo! Miles! Hi! 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 Miles, you're showing everyone you bought, like the whole internet. And then I'll just take these repotted ones to be watered. That's all right, the succulent. Okay, now we have a returning patient to Houseplant Hospital. This is Begonia Griffin. I went and I rescued this from someone, I think it was Kate, was it Kate? On a local Facebook plant group. And when I looked into it, I think, I will confirm on the screen right now, I believe that it had root rot. And I treated it, but if you ever dealt with root rot before, you might know it's quite tricky to treat. You can treat it, but it does recur in a lot of cases. And this has been a case where I believe it has recurred and it's not managed to fully um, recover from that. So it has been struggling quite a lot and dropping leaves. And I just keep thinking to myself that I should start it over again so that I can start it with a healthy root system. And also because I see all this wasted potential here of this whole bare branch that could be so many baby begonias. What we're gonna do is completely prop this, even though it's got a cute little new leaf on the way. I just feel that I know by now that this plant is just going to carry on doing this. So I'm going to just start again. I'm doing it, I'm doing it. We're gonna get choppy. This one and a couple of others are going to be water propagations and you don't have to but I'm just removing all these old sheets because I feel like pests can hide in them and stuff and it also just looks nice without them but also I'm about to put the majority of these into a moss 
prop box and I don't want it to rot in there. I am going to take that leaf off because we've already got this leaf, which is a very nice leaf and we've got this new one on the way and multiple growth points. So I think that will do nicely. I've run out of like glass containers and stuff. So I've got a plant pot <laughs> to prop them in in water. Yeah, see, even those roots right from the top were so dried out. I think it's just been too damaged by long-term uh, periods of drought. Because Ellie was telling me the other day that you can root the leaves, so we'll just, we'll pop it in there, we'll see. And then I've got these and we've got five, one, two, three, five, yes I can count to five, five wet sticks. There's an abysmal amount of soil on the floor right now, abysmal. So I've got one of these and then I'm using my Soil Ninja Live Sphagnum Moss. Amy so kindly put this in as an extra for me when I ordered my Monster and Philodendron mix because she knows uh, that I love, love the Sphagnum Moss and I'm so happy because I've not got any more poles yet to put it in. Uh, so this is my first time cracking it, well I cracked into it the other day but using the moss from this bag and it was absolutely stuffed to the top was this bag. And a lot of the times when you buy it and it's uh, the live one and not the compact ones that are really expensive, like it can seem like you're not getting that much because a lot of companies will like already have separated it like how I have here and then it's looser, but they've really packed it in here and it's the best quality moss that I've ever used. So you can also get a discount on this moss if you use my code. I do water propagate philodendron and some begonia cuttings and stuff uh, because those species root easily in water, but uh, with everything else, my go-to is always Moss prop box, anything that's struggling, moss prop box, higher, moss prop box, moss prop box. And if it wasn't a wet stick, I'd have a bit more of a specific way that I do this, but because it's wet sticks, um, they need to be as exposed to the light as they can be, so I don't want to cover it up. So I'm just nestle them in for a little nap till they hopefully wake up for me. And then we can pop this on and that just keeps the humidity at like 90% in there, which helps it root. And I'm gonna put it on the top of my shelf so that it's right under the bright light, especially because this is slightly frosted. Also, I just really, really quickly have to show you guys, look how much, this was the leaf before the last leaf. Look how much my Anthurium Umbricola has sized up. It's absolutely stunning, I'm in love with it. So anyway, that's gonna be it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing me rescue some plants, repot some plants, all that jazz. What planty to do's have you guys been getting done this week? Let me know in the comments down below. At the moment, I post long form content on Fridays, so please do hit that button, subscribe to be notified when I next make a video. I also post every day on TikTok, there's all kinds of funky business on there. And I also live stream at least once a week, so do check that out. And I hope you're having a great day thinking about hoose plants.